Now, if these are not two words to strike the fear of everybody uh, in mathematics, uh, I don't know which is. Trigonometric and equations. Trig and equations. Hello, trig and equations. What are we doing? Switch off the video and go and do something else. No, just joking. Stick with us. Hi, guys. Welcome. Thanks very much for joining. Uh, so, yes, those of you who are working with me, uh, then please have a go at these questions at the end of this teaching. But otherwise, let's recap. So all the way through this course, trig is really important. And the last few lessons we looked at sort of the graphs of sine and cosine. We didn't do tan. That's coming up. All right. But we've been looking at this idea of all stations to Canberra to help us find solutions to sine, cosine and tangent identities. So once again, remember our graph goes zero, pi on two, pi, three pi on two and two pi. And we know that all values in there are positive stations to Canberra and all sine in quadrant two are positive. All tan values in this are positive and all cosine values in this are positive. And what's important is if I can find this angle here or I know this angle here or this angle here or this angle here, all of which are the same as my reference angle here, then I can actually use some pretty basic maths to help me find all of those other values. All right. Alternatively, you can use a sine and cosine curve. So previously, we used the idea of triangles to help us find the sine of 30, the cosine 30, and the tan of 30. So if we have this angle here, this triangle, remember that's 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and that's a right angle triangle. Now, the only thing I ever remember is the sine of 30 degrees is equal to a half. So silly old Harry, that is uh, root 3. Now, once I've drawn that triangle, then the rest of it is, so what do we say? We've got sine of 30, we already know it was a half. So the cosine of 30 degrees would be equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, which is root 3 on 2. And then the tan of 30 degrees, I just used that fabulous formula that was equal to the sine of 30 divided by the cosine of 30, which gives me 1 half divided by root 3 on 2. And again, I'm writing it this way so that you can do the keep change flip thing and see what I'm doing. All right. So they cancel, which gives me 1 over root 3. That's one way of doing it. Or I could have just looked at tan of 30, which is the opposite over the adjacent, and got 1 over root 3 straight away. So that's one way of viewing sort of values using this triangle. Another one is using this here. Now, obviously, again, it's about identification of questions. When I look at this, the minute I see cos of 2 pi minus x, my brain goes, hold on a moment. I know that this has got something to do with all stations to Canberra or my unit circle, as everyone else in the world calls it. So 0, pi on 2, pi, 3 pi on 2, and 2 pi. Now we want 2 pi minus x, so it's not quite at 2 pi. I know that that value there is x, and I've got all stations to Canberra. Right, okie dokie. So let me see, what are we doing? I want to find the cos of 2 pi minus x. Now I know that's going to be exactly equal because this angle is, is connected to the x-axis, it's equal to my reference angle here. I can use the same ideas here. So I know that the cos of 2 by x is going to be equal to the cosine of x. All I've got to do is work out whether it's going to be positive or negative. Ah, well hold on a moment. We're in this quadrant here. All cosine values are positive. So I can put a positive there. I won't really put a positive. I'll just put a pi sign. What's that all about? Put a positive there. And so I know that the cosine of 2 pi minus x is equal to the cosine of x. But hold on, what's the cosine of x? Oh, hello. You told me the cosine of x was equal to 0 0.68. So I can write down the cosine of 2 pi minus x is equal to 0 0.68. Job done. There's the end of the answer. Love it. Now, this is the basis of the work that we're going to do now, all right? When you do solutions of equations, you've got to realize there's actually more than one. When you put, if you were to put sine theta equals half into your calculator, and let's just do the whole CAS stuff, cos comma theta, although you wouldn't have theta on your calculator, you'd probably do x. Your calculator will come out with either, depending on the rules, 30 degrees, or it will come out with pi on 6. Now, believe it or not, that's not the only answer. And hopefully you're aware why. If I draw my sine curve... And remember, it's periodic and it goes on and on and on to infinity and beyond both ways. When I'm trying to solve for sine theta equals a half, 
this is my y value. It's basically saying, for what value of theta is y a half? Well, the maximum value is 1, the minimum value is minus 1, and I'm just going to now draw a horizontal line through the value where y equals a half. And what do we see? Well, this first value here is absolutely 30 degrees. It's the one the calculator gave me. But what the calculator didn't give me was this value, this value, this value, this value, and in fact, all subsequent values, and in fact, the one's negative. It only gave me that first value. Now, the good news is, I only need one value to help me find all of the rest. Why? Well, if I know this value here, I can find all stations to Canberra to help me find that value there. And then what do I know about the sine curve? Well, it's periodic, as in it repeats every 360 degrees. So whatever this value is here, I just add 360 to get that value, add another 360 to get that value, and so we go on. And likewise, whatever this value is here, add 360, I get there, and so it goes on. Now that's the great thing about sine and cosine curves. It's just using these symmetry properties. Right, so... Always find first solution. So I know that sine of theta is equal to a half, and I know then that sine, uh, sorry, aloneness, I know that theta is sine to the minus one of a half. So I know my first value of theta is equal to 30 degrees. Now, is that good enough? No, sadly, my question says, hold on a moment, between zero and four pi, well, my brain is now looking at this going, well, they want actually two rotations. I know my standard graph goes between 0 and 2 pi. That means it's got to go at least two rotations, or in fact, it's got to go two rotations. How many solutions am I looking for? Well, for a standard sine curve, we would have two solutions. So for two standard sine curves, I'd have four solutions. Remember, two solutions because it cuts here. And here, that's my first solution set for one. And then every sine curve after that will have two. Right. So, firstly, it's got to be in radians. So I don't want 30 degrees. I want pi on six. Next, I'm just going to write a little note to say I want four solutions. Okay. Now, we're going to find the rest of the solutions. First things first, I'm going to have, here's my all stations to Canberra. I know my first value is pi on six all stations to Canberra. All right, so the only other place that sine is positive, and it's got to be positive because it's positive a half, is going to be here. I know that this value here has to be pi on six. I know that's pi. I know that that's not quite pi. So to get to this value here, I'm going to do pi minus pi on six. Okay, so that's going to give me five pi on six. So my first solution was pi on six. My next solution, which is the one here with the shaded lines, gives me 5 pi on 6. Now, having found those, life becomes so much easier because all I've got to do to get to my next two solutions is take each of these and add on 2 pi. Now, the way I tend to do this is I'm going to add on 2 pi, which is 2 pi and 1. But what do I notice about the denominator of all of these? Well, they're all 6s. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to become... 12 pi on 6. How's that going to help me? Well, now all I need to do is keep adding 12 pi to the top values to get to my fractions. So I can now say that's 13 pi on 6. I mean, don't forget to divide by 6. And 5 plus 12 is 17 pi on 6. And ladies and gentlemen, there are my values between 0 and 4 pi. Wow. This is really cool stuff. Now, just let's just check. All right? Bearing in mind my values were 13 pi on 6 and 17 pi on 6, if I was to add on another 12 pi on 6, what would I get? Add on 12 pi on 6 to there, I get uh, 25 pi on 6. Now let's just check. How many 6s are in 25? 4 remained a 1. So it's bigger than 4. So that's definitely greater than 4 pi. So is no longer a solution. And in fact, anything over that or anything before that or anything lower than pi on 6 won't work. Whoa, that's pretty awesome. Okay, so again, questions can throw you with using radians. Now, first things first, that's in the radians, all right? So you've got sine of x is equal to minus 0 0.3. And you're going to try and find two values that fall between 0 and 2 pi. So first things first, you've got to find that first solution. 
So I would have to do x is equal to inverse sine of minus 0.3. Now again, make sure your calculator is in radians. Now, as it turns out, the great news is that I get my first value as equal to minus 0 0.30469 which, to be perfectly honest with you, I'm just going to round to be minus 0 0.3. Now, that was lucky. Having got my first value, what do I then do? Well, yep, once again, all stations to Canberra. So... I've got sine of x is equal to minus 0.3. So my first solution, I nail that is 0.3. I need to have it between 0 and 2 pi. So there we go. Once again, that's 0. That's pi on 2, pi, 3 pi on 2, and 2 pi. Now, the reason, if you remember, when it's minus 0.3, it just means it's coming around the circle in an opposite direction. But... I've got that angle with reference to my x-axis, which means that must also be 0 0.3. So we're looking for all stations to Canberra. What are we looking for? We're looking for sine to be negative. Again, so this is the trick. We're looking for sine to be negative. Well, it can't be in quadrant 1, because that's all values are positive. It can't be in quadrant 2, because that's all sine values are positive. So I now know it has to be here. And because we're looking for values that are between 0 and 2 pi, to get to this one here, I want to do pi plus 0 0.3. And to get to this value here, I want to do 2 pi minus 0 0.3. And that's exactly how we find the solutions. Right? So this actually isn't any help to us. So that's not one of my solutions. So I now find the actual solutions, which give me an x value of, we're going to do so pi plus uh, 0.3 gives me uh, 3.44 to two decimal places. And then we want to do our next value of 2 pi minus 0 0.3. So 2 times pi minus 0.3 gives me 5.98. Again, correct to two decimal places. And they, ladies and gentlemen, are my two values. So again, same idea. Find that first solution. In this situation, use that to use my all stations to Canberra, and then make sure that you find the values in this situation between 0 and 2 pi. Right? It's in all cases really important to know how many solutions you're looking at. So if I had 2 sine theta, for example, and I was going to, let's imagine all of these are going to go between 0 and 2 pi inclusive. In that situation, that changes my amplitude. It doesn't change my period. So in that situation, my period is 2 pi. And as such, I'd be expecting two solutions. If I had 3 sine 2 theta, again, that's my amplitude. Makes no difference. In this situation, that's going to half my period. So whereas my standard period was 2 pi, it's now going to become pi. I'd normally have two solutions. I'm now going to double it and I'd be looking for four solutions. All right, very, very straightforward. Just look at that value there and work out how many you're looking for, right? You can also be expected to find angles in degrees, don't forget. So again, if we had the cosine of theta equals to root three on two. Now, a lot of people say to me, uh, these will always be calculator questions, yes? And I'm like, no, 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 not always, okay? Particularly with you've got root threes on twos, one on root twos, twos, all that type of stuff, because it comes from the standard triangle. So again, if I know that this is 30, that's 60. I know sine is 1 and 2, so there's root 3. So we want cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we need the root 3 to be adjacent to the angle. It has to be 30 degrees. So I now know my first value is 30 degrees. I use all stations to Canberra. I know that that's 30 degrees. And I'm looking for all values, so all stations to Canberra. The only one that's positive is there. That's 360 degrees minus 30 degrees. And so my only other value will be 330 degrees. Yeah, so you can still do these without calculators. These more complex examples will actually turn up in exams. There's no two ways about it, right? Why? Because they test so much. They test understanding, algebra, trig, the works. So 
Important to note that we're looking for two theta. We're looking for the solutions of two theta, which will then look to get us to the solutions of theta. Now, lots of different teachers teach this in lots of different ways. This is the way I always remember doing it. It's got me through high school, it got me through uni, and it's got me through about 147 years of teaching. So, if you think of it another way, knock yourself out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, sine of 2 theta is equal to minus root 3 on 2. So I'm now going to say that 2 theta is equal to the inverse sine of minus root 3 on 2. And I'm going to use my calculator for this. Yes, you can use the triangle, and maybe you'll be expected to do that in a non-calculator exam. But for brevity, I now know that 2 theta is equal to minus pi on 3. This here is my first solution. That's it. It is my first solution. I now need to find all the solutions that are going to fit between minus pi and pi. But how many solutions will there be? Well, if you remember, a standard sine curve will have two solutions. But because we're doing 2 theta, we're now squidging that in, effectively doubling the number of solutions. So I'm now going to look for four solutions. I've only got the first one. So I can now say that 2 theta equals, and I'm going to leave some space to say minus pi on 3. What am I going to do now? Well, I'm going to draw my all stations to Canberra. So all stations to Canberra. I'm looking for sine to be negative. So it's got to be in this quadrant and this quadrant here. And I'm going to say, well, I know that that's pi on 3. I now know that that is pi on 3. Right. I actually always reference my solutions between 0 and 2 pi, and then I backtrack when I need to. So I now know that this solution here is pi plus pi on 3. And I know that this solution here is 2 pi minus pi on 3. Right, so pi plus pi on 3 gives me 4 pi on 3. And I know that 2 pi minus pi on 3 gives me 5 pi on 3. Good. So actually, these are the two solutions that have come from my all station camera, and I've got another one there just for good measure. Checking, how do I now get all the rest of my solutions? Well, simply by adding 2 pi onto each of these values. Why? Now you're going to probably turn around and say, well, hold on a moment, are we dealing with 2 theta? We are, but at this moment in time, I've just done the inverse sine. So I'm actually still dealing with my standard sine curve, so I can still deal with my standard period. And just to check, if you actually take away 2 pi from 5 pi on 3, you get minus pi on 3. So that's good. That, that's sort of working. Now, I always go that 2 pi on 1 is equal to, and I look at the denominator here, which is a 3. So I turn that into 6 pi on 3. The reason being, I now know I can add 6 pi or take away 6 pi from each of the top numbers in my fraction. It makes life so much easier. So 5 pi minus 6 pi gave me minus pi on 3. I'm now going to take away 6 pi on 3 from that one there. So 4 minus 6 is minus 2 pi on 3. I've got four solutions there, but I don't know whether they're going to be the right solution. So I always overdo it. I always then do more solutions than I need. So 4 plus 6 is 10 pi on 3. 5 plus 6 is 11 pi on 3. And bearing in mind, I'm just adding on 6 pi and taking off 6 pi life it's not that difficult i'm going to rub this out for a second just to give me some room so pi minus six pi is minus seven pi on three and two minus six or minus two minus six is minus eight pi on three now again give my spell self some room these are all values of two theta and i've massively overkilled this now what do i need to do well it doesn't want the solutions of two theta it wants the solutions of theta which means i now got a half all of these values. So if I half all these values, I get minus 8 pi on 6, minus 7 pi on 6, minus 2 pi on 6, minus pi on 6, 4 pi on 6, 5 pi on 6, 10 pi on 6, and 11 pi on 6. And now you'll see how I've overkilled it, because I only need the values that go between minus pi and pi. Minus pi and pi. Well, for a start, if I do minus 7 divided by 6, I'm going to get bigger than 1. So that doesn't exist, so that can't exist. Likewise, that's bigger than what, pi, that's bigger than pi. Ladies and gentlemen, there are my four solutions. Now, I do this every single time, and it seems long, but the more you do it, the quicker you get, and actually, it makes life so, so much easier. And with practice, you'll start to hone in straight on the four solutions anyway. 
Last one here, solve two cos theta e plus one equals zero. Now again, this is just a big fat trick. Whenever you see it equal to zero, just try and get the cosine on its own, or the sine on its own, or the tan on its own. So in this situation, writing this out as two cos theta plus one equals zero, I now know that cos theta, uh, sorry, two cos theta equals minus one. So cos theta equals minus a half. There we go. So I can now say that theta is equal to uh, inverse cos of minus a half. Find my first value and then go on and solve. So finding my first value, uh, let's put my calculator in trig mode. Inverse cos minus a half gives me 2 pi on 3. That's my first solution. 2 pi on 3, 2 thirds of pi. How is that going to help me? Well, I now know then that this value here must be pi on 3. I'm looking for cos to be negative, all stations to Canberra. So that has to be pi on 3. So I now know my solution set includes uh, 2 pi on 3, because that actually fits less than 2 pi. And now this value here is pi plus pi on 3, because it's gone from pi and it's a bit further around my circle, which gives me 4 pi on 3. How many solutions am I expecting? Two. Is this a dilation anywhere? No. So ladies and gentlemen, there we go. Those are my two solutions. Now, great news. Your cows can do all of this for you. Massively, massively, massively all of this for you. Just be aware of the notation. So the first thing was, if you had sine of 2 theta, that was a dreadful theta. Let's try that again. 2 theta equals minus root 3 on 2, and you were asked to find it between minus pi and pi. Then all you do is you do solve, open brackets, sine of 2x, I'd put everything in x's because it's easier to do your x, equals minus root 3 on 2. Now, you then do a vertical line and you limit the domain. So you tell the calculator you want to go from minus pi to pi, then your normal comma, and then say solve for x. And when you press equals, no word of a lie, all of your solutions drop out. Now, I know that's true of a Classio cast pad. I'm sure... <coughs> I'm sure that must be true of the um, TI Inspire, although with the TI Inspire, I'm not 100% sure whether you have to put that somewhere else. I can't remember off the top of my head. But anyway, long lesson. Thank you so much for listening. I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for joining us for that video. It was really good having you. Now, if you'd like to know when the next video is coming, why not click on subscribe? Alternatively, head on over to mathsguru.com where you can watch all of the videos on its own dedicated website. While Otherwise, watch the video that's just popped up. It'll be part of this series. All right, take care. See you again soon.